Hello, Bobby Torres of Freightbox Recording here with Tales from an Ex Gearhead. Now, I'll be posting videos within this series from time to time where I talk about my past obsession with gear and how I eventually ended up seeing the light. And in this particular episode, I'm going to talk about how I ended up fixing my mixes harsh high end or harsh top end. Now, I don't know about you, but this is something that I used to struggle with all of the time. My mixes often sounded harsh, which is very hard on the ears and not very analog. Now, just like low end and low end management when it comes to mixing heavy music, high end can also be a problem. Now, for me personally, after I was into production for a few years and had a few bands under my belt, I started noticing that my high end was very inconsistent in my productions. Sometimes it would be nice and smooth, and other times it would be very harsh and hard to get a handle on. In other words, certain projects had a nice smooth top end, and other projects had a very harsh top end that were next to impossible to fix when it came time to mix. And the one thing I took note of is that it almost always had to do with my cymbals. In other words, sometimes my cymbals were nice and smooth, and other times they sounded like razor blades, just very difficult to dial in, especially when it came to EQ. I just could never get my cymbals sounding nice and smooth when I wanted to. Sometimes I would get lucky, but more often than not, they would end up sounding pretty harsh. And to dive in even further, the more I analyzed and the more experience I gained, I noticed the big issue came down to hi-hats. In other words, the hi-hats when I would record bands would generally kill the sound of the top end of my mix. An issue I would often have is I would have drummers asking me to turn up their crashes, turn up their ride cymbal and their china, and whenever I would bring up my overheads to help make those cymbals louder, my hi-hat would be destroying everything. It was very hard to work with. Now, like many other people, the natural thing for me to do at the time was to go onto online forums, and it was a massive mistake, believe me. I remember back in around 2007 and 2008 searching around the Gear Sluts forum and reading of others having the same issue that I was having. And the most common piece of advice other engineers would give these beginners would be to buy high-end preamps, buy better microphones, and worst of all, buy high-end converters. And it was funny, no one ever brought up room acoustics or techniques while tracking. Everything had to do with gear and buying more expensive gear. Now, this is something I struggled with for many years. And to be honest with you, I was getting to be pretty desperate around 2007 and 2008. I had already recorded a bunch of bands for around three years at that point, And my high end was just so inconsistent. And again, I knew that it had to do with my cymbals and something going wrong with my cymbal recording. But back then I blamed everything on my mixing and my gear, when in reality it had to do with neither. So long story short, I saved up a few thousand dollars. My plan was to buy a bunch of API preamps because that's what people recommended in the forums, some Neumann small diaphragm condenser mics, and even some Apogee converters. I was this close from pulling the trigger and spending around three to $4,000 on some new gear just to get a better cymbal sound to hopefully remedy this issue of harsh top end in my mixes. And thank God for what happened next. I would say it was around the year 2009, and I started reading up on a producer, one of my favorite producers at the time, Andy Sneap. Now, Andy's an amazing producer, and he's also very transparent and shares a lot of his techniques with others online, especially back then at the end of the mid 2000s. And I'll never forget the moment that I read an interview with him where he talks about his drum recording techniques. The first thing he mentioned is that if cymbals are not recorded properly, the hi-hat will kill your mix. Immediately, a light bulb went off in my head. I realized, okay, even a professional has this issue, and I know that Andy's working with top-notch gear in top-notch studios. Within that same interview, he mentions that he close mics cymbals and avoids the hi-hats at all costs. In other words, he spot mic cymbals, so that way he rejects the hi-hat, mics the hi-hat separately, and uses that for his hi-hat level within his drum mixes. This is something I had never even thought of doing on my own. As a matter of fact, when I went to school for audio, we were taught to mic drums with a traditional pair of spaced overheads. And he even mentions in some of these interviews that a traditional pair of spaced overheads rarely works for metal for two primary reasons. Number one, a lot of metal drummers use a bunch of cymbals and to try and get all that coverage with a space pair is very difficult. And number two, a lot of times when drummers are playing super fast, whether it's a death metal band or a thrash band or any form of technical metal, they're often not hitting their crashes that hard. And when they lean on the hi-hat, they're bashing the crap out of it. Again, that light bulb moment went off in my head where I realized that was always the case when I was recording drummers, or not always, but more often than not. When it was an easier section of the song and they were playing a hi-hat, they were just destroying 
flying the hat. And when it was a quicker section, they were just lightly hitting the crashes. Not all drummers, but a lot. Now, thank God I read this interview before I spent my three or $4,000 on a bunch of dumb gear I actually didn't need. The next project I recorded, I'll never forget it. It was a band called Seasick. Um, I mic'd the cymbals close, and I followed the same exact technique that Andy described in this particular interview, where I mic'd the cymbals toward the edge of the cymbals as close as possible and tried to avoid the hat at all costs. Lo and behold, immediately I had a smoother top end with a much more manageable hi-hat sound that I can control. Smoother sounding cymbals, smoother sounding drums, smoother sounding top end in my mix. No new gear necessary. As a matter of fact, I was using cheap Samson CO2 pencil condenser mics. Now, before I read this interview with Andy Sneap, I was listening to people in forums. I thought my mic sucked and that's why my cymbals sounded like crap. I thought my converters were cheap and that's why my cymbals didn't sound right. I thought that I needed high-end preamps and that's why I didn't have that nice warm analog sound. When in reality, it had nothing to do with that is that I just didn't have experience when it came to miking cymbals within a metal context. The one thing I wanna mention is that when I started out recording, I used to record all different genres of music jazz, lighter rock, indie rock, all different stuff. And I noticed the issue really came into play when I was recording metal. And again, it really had to do with the reasons, like I previously mentioned, where metal drummers will hit the hi-hat hard and not hit their crashes hard enough in relation to one another. In other words, their crashes would be quiet and their hi-hat would be loud. So when they would ask you to turn up their cymbals in the mix, all of a sudden you have a hi-hat that's taking your head off. Now, someone like Andy Sneap at the time, when I read this interview, this guy had 20 years of experience. So he went through all of the same issues that I went through and he learned from either other engineers that he worked with or through just trial and error. And this is why I always like to share these stories with people just in case they're going through the same things that I used to go through. I used to always blame my gear. I thought my bad guitar sounds were because, again, I didn't have high-end preamps or I needed a fancier amp sim. I thought my screaming vocals sounded harsh because I needed a tube preamp. In reality, the gear has next to nothing to do with it. It all comes down to your system and your approach. So with that being said, I want you to achieve better results with the gear you have right now. And because of this, I've put together a five-step guide for better heavy mixes. Download the free guide. There's a link below in this video's description and get right to making better sounding productions, again, with the gear you already have. No new gear required. So I really hope you learned something from this video. I wish a video like this existed when I was going through what I just mentioned, because I'm telling you, I spent years, year, I'm not exaggerating, from 2005 to around 2008 or 2009, I was pulling my hair out trying to get a nice smooth cymbal sound. And looking for answers on the internet often just led me down a never ending rabbit hole of just false baloney information that wasn't true. Learn from professionals and learn from people that have real world experience, not people in gear forms telling you to buy stuff you don't need. So again, I will be doing some videos within this series from time to time because there are tons of mistakes I made that had to do with gear and that were related to me thinking gear was the answer when it really wasn't. And I can't wait to share with you more of them. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of our weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And until next time, happy recording. Meow.